skiing am I on? I can't tell if I'm on or not. Hello everybody, it's your favorite ictus nerd in the whole universe, Mike Myers. And we are here on our Monday, Wednesday, 2 o'clock Central Daylight Time. Ask me anything. The goal of this live stream is to provide those of us who are isolated because of the coronavirus an opportunity to uh, ask questions and stay in... Do I even sound great? I sound good. <laughs> Uh, an opportunity to ask questions uh, so we're not all feeling alone as we study. Uh, we This live stream concentrates on IT fundamentals, A+, Network+, plus, and Security+, plus, but we're certainly capable of going outside of that as needed, but that's really where our, our most of our comfort is. Uh, this is an Ask Me Anything. So the goal of this AMA is very simple. You ask me anything and then I answer your questions. Uh, if you want to, you can just go ahead and bring questions right into the live chat here uh, on the YouTube channel, or if you're a shyer type, you can contact me via email. So here's my contact information. So anything you might need there, I'm Michael M at totalsem.com. That's my office number, which is still six months later. I mean, if it was like an emergency, you can call me and get a hold of me that way, but uh, it's tricky. Uh, my Steam account, if you're a gamer, is Senor Pepe. And I'm pretty much desweds at anything. So guess what my email account, uh, Gmail account is? Deswedz at Gmail or <coughs> anything like that. So Deswedz is a kinetic acronym. If you type it, you'll see why I've been using Deswedz for such a very, very long time. So anyway, it's hilarious. After taking 30 days off, I have got some big backlogs. And one of the things I thought we'd be taking care of today is I have a number of emails that have come in over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I know I'm a little behind on a few of these, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about uh, some of the questions. I haven't even looked at them all, so I hope uh, there's not <coughs> nothing too scary on there. Uh, but uh, I was going to go ahead and concentrate on that. That is not going to take that long, folks. So please, if you have questions, <coughs> oh, God, drinking problem, uh, go ahead and just... Uh, Punch them on into the live chat, and uh, me and my buddy Scott Jernigan, and who else is here today? Dave Rush is here. Dave, <laughs> so for those Europe non-American folks, today is Labor Day. Not like the workers May 1st, but uh, I don't know, it's Labor Day. We've been celebrating here in the United States. We celebrate people who work hard. Anyway, so it's a three-day weekend for us. So uh, here in the United States, a lot of things are just closed today. More than just COVID closed, it's Labor Day closed. But uh, I went ahead and just and thought we'd go ahead and do it today. Uh, so it might be a little bit of a lighter one. Every time I say we're going to have a lighter session, it ends up being very intense, which is good, which is all good. Um, but uh, that's really what the bottom line is for today, gang, is we're going to concentrate more on backlog of questions from when I've been out. Um, Always oh, so terrified. Man, this pop out is just being mean to me once again. All right. Transplant Health just typed hello all. I hope that's the bottom end of the uh, chat. Yes, I have the chat pop out up and all that. So uh, we'll see how we might be doing here in a minute. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Uh, anyway, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, you guys have been hollering now for a while for a kind of a port list kind of a thing. It's like, Mike, we understand, you know, we understand the protocols, da, 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 but it would be nice to have like a port list. And uh, I've had a couple of people send me port lists, but the problem is nobody has sent me what I need. And what I'm, I'm looking to do is, very simply is uh, I want to do like one sheet that does what are the ports for A+, what are the ports for Net+, and what are the ports for Security+. Plus? So Dave Rush has a good start and, and got me the objectives, but now my goal is to make it pretty somehow. I'm going to punch it into a PowerPoint or something and basically go, all right, if you're studying for A+, know these ports. Now keep in mind when we say these ports, I'm not the idea, my understanding, because this is not my way of learning, but I want to help other people, is that having a sheet with all the port numbers helps you memorize them. But you have to keep in mind, CompTIA looks at ports differently depending on what exam you're looking at. Uh, I mean, there are some questions where they're going to ask you the port number and things like that. But like in Security Plus, in my opinion, 
it doesn't ask you the port numbers. It just shows you stuff with that port number. Yeah, and you should know what that port number is. So yes, I can provide you a list and be, you know, TCP, UDP, port number, maybe add a quick overview of what it does, broken down by A plus, net plus, and security plus, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the way you need to study this stuff. So anyway, uh, we'll, we're gonna have that put together. Um, really, it's just one more step from here, and that is making it pretty. So. I like pretty things, so we'll make it nice and pretty. Uh, okay, so before I dive in, are there any questions showing up yet here? What color is your favorite black horse? Yeah, okay, Scott. Mm -hmm. I'm working on people, yeah, Security Plus. I gotta tell you, I'm pretty sure the Total Seminars is gonna be, we're gonna be out, out the gate fastest with security plus stuff the coronavirus has just messed up all kinds of production so even our competitors are are behind we'll see you never can tell on these things all right so i don't see any questions all right so i'm going to go ahead and just start diving in now guys do remember the uh goal of this ama is i answer your questions so this will run till four o'clock Central Daylight Time, or until the questions run out. So if you have questions for you, this is a great opportunity. I'm going to burn through all of these questions real quick. All right, so my buddy Wayne has just sent me, <laughs> thank you, Wayne, uh, his version of the port spreadsheet, which is pretty. Give you guys a chance to, I know you're not going to be able to see it exactly, but it's just a Excel spreadsheet. Uh, I want to make it prettier and I want to break it up by A plus, net plus, and security plus. But still, it's very handy. Thank you, Wayne. I appreciate that. <laughs> you guys think I did not rehearse these things. Uh, got an interesting letter uh, from a guy 60 years old. Just started the A plus certification course in Dublin, uh, Dublin, Ireland. And it does. So you attend these courses, no experience. Well, man, Jimmy, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, you know, the thing I always tell people is just because, you know, you're 60, which means you have a lot of experience doing something. And if you can tie that into IT, that's always going to be a great way to go. But welcome aboard. Uh, so this is from uh, Milos. Good Irish name there. I'm kidding. That's a joke. All right. Da, da, da. Were, they owned a stereo shop. And they were just technology nerds. And they had an old S100 Zilog system that was running CPM with the big old 8-inch floppy drives. And I'm like, what is this? Where what is this thing? You know, and I mean, I played with some systems a little bit. I'd uh, done some work with some VAX systems. Nothing really major, though. But anyway, the bottom line was, is this thing was running CPM, which is kind of like the, arguably, the precursor to the old DOS operating system. And I just got interested in it. Also, I was starving to death, and I was a pretty good writer. So I was helping people, helping people write term papers uh, for a small consideration. And that was actually the first time I was exposed to a word processing program, which was so much better than typing in carbons, it wasn't even funny. And uh, it was a program called WordStar. And uh, so I got, I was doing pretty good, pretty good. And uh, so I went from there about the, quickly after that, PCs, the first IBM PC came out and uh, I just got hooked on them. And either professionally or for fun, I've been in that technology since about 1979, 1980. It's a long time, isn't it? 40 years, 40 years of technology. Okay. Uh, so that's the answer to you, Milos. Who else we got here? God, we, I'm so, I did, got behind on these. I am so embarrassed. Oh, Mustafa's asking me for a job or get him a job. Yeah, but at least, okay, he's here in the U.S. That's good. All right. 
Will I be able to find a job by experience only or do I have to get the certificates to get a job generally? You don't need any certificates to get a lot of entry level jobs here in the United States. Uh, we've had a number of episodes that talked about this. Uh, you might want to refer back and uh, we list it like uh, I, how to get entry level IT jobs, IT security jobs with Jessica Dickerson would be a great one to start with and she gave us some really good information. Certifications, IT certifications are not going to get you a job. They're going to put your resume at the top of the stack of the resumes. Uh, they're going to give some filtering for HR people, you know, must have an A-plus certification or something like that. But in general, having a certification will not get you a job. I can't tell you how many times I've been embarrassed. Somebody goes and gets their A-plus certification and they just start walking into some job and it's like, well, I'm A-plus certified. It's almost like somebody walking up goes, well, I know how to use a telephone. It's like, well, you know, these core certifications are kind of assumed. So the number one thing is you go get a job, go get a job, go get a job. Okay. Well, I can't find any jobs. We'll keep looking. I've got whole episodes where we talk about different ways for people who are at entry level to get a job. So go get a job. But then you build your certifications up. I still get new certifications. It's something that doesn't really end. I would like to work in cybersecurity. Oh, well, definitely look up that Jessica Dickerson video we did uh, last month. What certificates do you recommend I target? Well, you know, it's easy for me to say A plus, net plus, security plus, and then figure it out on your own. Uh, but, you know, a lot of people, especially if your IT security is an end goal for you, uh, A plus is much more of a standalone repair thing. I think it would help but I don't think it's critical. The big ones, the ones important to me is Network Plus because when you start taking Security Plus, that certification just assumes you know most of what's on the Network Plus. Even my training materials for Security Plus kind of assume you've already taken Network Plus, as I say in very big letters. So A plus, Net Plus, maybe, but Net Plus and then Security Plus for sure. So good luck to you, Mustafa. Toilets on Labor Day. You guys scare me. Sam Vell, thanks for your A-plus. You're A-plus certified. All right, man. Haven't got to do a round of applause for a while. That makes me feel good. Ah, Falak is here. Is there an easy way to understand the difference between data steward and custodian, please? Sure. Hold on, did I miss a question? Quentin Williams, hey Quentin. Mark Spalding, I would like to hear your approach of studying the ports from a CompTIA perspective. There is no studying of ports from a CompTIA perspective in my opinion. I, I, okay, I guess what you're trying to say is, is there a way to look at ports based on A plus, Net plus, and Security plus? Sure. Uh, A plus ports, you have to really think about, remember what A plus is. A plus is a, how do I fix this standalone computer that may be hooked to the network or the internet? It's a standalone computer. So when you're looking at ports, you're usually talking about applications that are going to be coming back and forth on that particular system. Be able to run a simple netstat, like a netstat minus A, to be able to know what those ports are coming from, understand a port needs a server, understand a port needs a client, using netstat or TCP view tools to be able to understand and diagnose stuff. Like for example, if you run netstat minus A, here we'll do it right, netstat minus A minus N, uh, on your computer and you see that you have a listening port on port 80, what does that tell you? Well, that tells you you have a web server built onto your computer. You're like, well, I don't have a web server. I didn't install it. Yeah, well, somebody did. Uh, so that's where uh, understanding the ports and how it affects an individual system. Uh, things like host-based firewalls, Windows Defender firewall, and how you can actually uh, set up exemptions for certain things based on port number. Right. So I'd give you an idea. Also understand from the A plus standpoint how the 
port thing works. So where you have to have a port number, destination port, and an ephemeral port generated by the client. That would be about the, the big stuff for A+. Net plus takes it a lot further. Not only does Net Plus have the same type of questions you'll see on A+, but it will also start building in things like, you know, here's where the, the firewalls and proxy servers and things like that and how they might affect that propagation of ports. And uh, so it becomes, well, yeah, I mean, you still have to memorize a bunch of ports because of the uh, application that runs or the protocol that runs under them. But more than that, you're, you need to be playing with it uh, Looking in Wireshark, for example, which is big on Network Plus, looking at Wireshark and be able to say, I want to see all my DHCP traffic. And I want to do that by port number. So stuff like that. Security Plus almost doesn't really quiz you on port numbers and anything very much. Uh, it expects you to know port numbers because it'll say things like, how do I filter out FTP traffic? And you better know what ports FTP uses, huh? Okay, so... Uh, that would be the way I would look at the, the three different exams and how they look at ports. I had another question. I think I just totally skipped it, didn't I? <coughs> I'm just going to grab as many questions as I can today, guys. Corey Cotton. Mistake. Yeah, this is a known mistake. I thought I, I, oh, we had it fixed in the videos. I'm curious where Corey got this. See, I get in trouble because I'll, I'll make like one video series for Net Plus, but then it goes to different people, okay? I know you guys think, wow, we're all on Udemy or we're all on LinkedIn. No, no, there's a lot of other stuff out there too. And how they get updated and things really varies on our relationship with that particular customer. Bottom line is, is uh, when you're configuring enterprise level security on 802.11 networks, we tend to go with EAP. So the e EAP is a protocol that allows us to use lots of different types of authentication authorization uh, processes. So when we say EAP, we tend to say things like, you know, EAP TLS, EAP TTLS, uh, EAP MD5. So EAP just means, EAP is almost like an envelope when a wireless client and a wireless server are talking to each other say which kind of protocol we want to use with each other. And I do have a known typo where I do say, this is true, I say EAP TTLS requires two certificates. That is not true. EAP TLS wants to have two certificates, but even EAP TLS doesn't have, doesn't have to. EAP TTLS only requires a server certificate. And this Corey guy here actually put all kinds of you know, he didn't just say that, he like backed it up. So, yes, Corey, you're right. That is a typo. You need to tell me. Uh, where you're getting my questions from, because I think I had already fixed that on all the major customers, but sometimes minor customers don't make fixes. We upload to them. So. EAP TLS. Server and a client, EAP, TTLS, server certificate only. Scott, uh, been reading your books. How long do these discount codes last? So if you're nice enough to listen, we're always giving away discount codes. How long do they last? They, it's my understanding they last for a week. Scott, do you have any, uh, any insight on that? Anyway, this person tried to use one of the older codes, I guess, and it didn't work. So, uh, Scott, I don't think you're on right now. It looks like Kathy Yale is talking to you. Uh, I don't know how long these codes last. I'm pretty sure they last through the end of a week. So, like, we'll have a new code today. In fact, I'm sure we do have a new code today that I need to announce. And, uh, okay, Scott Journey is telling me it only lasts for a week. So, yeah, but I'm afraid they, it, it, it you, sometimes you got to jump on these things, man. Mitchell Skay. In your lectures on the A+, you mentioned that HTTP was not secure and that HTTP was secure. Okay, generally I'd agree with that. When I went to usmarshals.gov, 
it says that it is HTTPS, HTTPS but also not, not secure. Why is this? Uh, I'm going to go usmarshals.gov. Hey, come join me over there, guys. Let's see what happens when we do this. U-S-M-A-R-S-H-A marshals dot G-O-V. Okay, this is actually an interesting one. Why don't we take a look at this? So I just went over to the U.S. Marshals website. And uh, now keep in mind, I'm running Firefox here. I like the way Firefox handles stuff like this. So if you take a look right here, what's happening here, this is HTTPS. However, we're getting some cut. It doesn't show up. That is so hilarious that this error doesn't show up when I'm in this mode. Stand by. I'm going to make this thing show up. All right. Click on that. There it goes. So part of this page, something's not, something is not secure on the page. And I'm going to have to drill down and try to figure out exactly what that is. So what's happening here is we've got probably a, a, a cross-site scripting or something, which isn't necessarily always a bad thing. I mean, they happen, uh, but it was probably poorly organized or there's actually, I don't think there's a problem with the certificate here. I think there's a problem. Let me double check one more thing. I should have looked at this. So there's some kind of unsecure that's being brought down through an HTTPS page. Wow, this is rare and interesting. Thanks for pulling this one up. But as I'm going through, I'm taking a quick look at the, the certificate itself is fine for usmarshals.gov, but there's something in here and I'm not exactly sure how to go through on Firefox and confirm exactly where that is. We just have a little storm here in Houston all of a sudden. Yeah, if I disappear, guys, I'm going through the certificate right now. The certificate looks perfectly fine to me, but the error I'm getting says, this website does not supply ownership information. So probably what I'd be doing in this particular case is take this error, just do a quick Google search on it and see what pops up. It wouldn't be enough to stop me. Bottom line is HTTPS is certainly very secure. The problem that we're running into here is that, Michael, uh, there's something wrong with the certificate. And that's why that particular website, you brought it up. So HTTPS is secure. The usmarshals.gov HTTPS configuration, including their certificate, is screwed up and therefore it is not secure. You're right. Whew. That was an interesting one. All right, what do we got here? Da -da -da. Oh, that's right, we did. I'm sorry, I was starting to answer. Somebody had a question on uh, data custodian versus data steward. Yes, thank you, Scott. I'd forgotten I missed that. So a custodian, uh, they're the technical guys. They're the ones who uh, set up the right permissions on it. They're the ones who set up how the database is going to be used, uh, what type of data is or indexing is going to be in there, what kind of schema you know, for the data, that kind of stuff. The uh, stewards are more like business controls, uh, interaction with uh, people who are, in, in, like, uh, let's say you had an external group. Uh, the let me make sure I'm not lying here. Business controls, interaction with stakeholders. I hate the term interaction with stakeholders because it doesn't mean anything really. Uh, well, actually, in this case, it, it absolutely does. What we're talking about here is any business level agreements. You know, they're the ones who talk to the vendor, go, look, you guys need to make this connection, da 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 da. And then once that happens, then they go to the data custodians and they go, will you ha handle the setup so that we can do that kind of stuff? So, Custodians are more nerdy and stewards are more like the business type of people. Who are we going to let have? How much are we going to charge them? That kind of stuff. Thank you, Scott. Man, I totally missed that one. It was Falak. There you go. 
All right. Just a few more million questions. All right. We have an error on my fiber optic stuff. I am, Corey, I appreciate the input on this. I'm not so sure you're right, so I don't want to talk about that on here. Uh, I'll send you back an email and we'll, we'll work that one out. <laughs> okay, uh, this was from last week. Uh, Cindy, who was on last week, I don't, are you on today? I didn't see her. Uh, anyway, uh, she's got all these services hitting my network card, all right? So basically what happened probably is, uh, oh, she didn't even do that. She just ran the network uh, performance monitor. I thought she was going to be running Netstat. And what's happening is here, she's seeing a lot of stuff running, all these different sessions that are connected. She's like, do I need to turn some of this stuff off? And the answer is probably not. I'm looking through the list she's provided me. Uh, yeah, you know, so it's all the pretty standard stuff. She's running Chrome. Chrome's got a bunch of, uh, of versions in there. Uh, SVC host.exe, which is always, pretty much is always running there. Uh, run, there's a couple of programs in here I don't easily recognize. Runtimebroker.exe, I don't remember that one off the top of my head. Uh, ESRV, I think that is a, these are just the executables that she's looking at running on her system. And all I'm doing right now is I'm kind of mark one eyeballing it and seeing if there's anything in here I don't recognize. Actually, there's quite a few things in here I don't recognize. Cindy, what I'd be doing at this point is just there are tons of websites that are like, what is this process running on my system and do I need it? And uh, I would just start running it. You got Hewlett Packard's got like a way too many things and you're running adobe which uses a lot of background processes but you you just have to look ccxprocess.exe these things would make me nervous you've got a server side javascript running in on here that that would make me nervous node.exe i don't have these things memorized they're probably fine but you know you just type go on your google type process and then uh ccxprocess.exe and hit enter. And you're gonna find like 40 websites that are gonna tell you whether these are good or bad. And it's a slow and ugly pain in the patootie to do, Cindy, but there's no way around it. Also keep in mind is that it may be, the, all of these running may be perfectly fine. You feel badly for this machine, it works so hard. It's supposed to work hard, Cindy. Don't anthropomorphize your computer, it's just a big calculator. Peter. Just saying good things, thank you. Peter, you're out in Moses Lake? I drove past that about two weeks ago. Oh, this is Patricia Grace. She's looking at uh, standard questions here. I think we had these all covered. Just reading. She's got a double A degree. Worked as a bookkeeper. You need on the job experience. Gosh, an experienced bookkeeper who's moving into IT? Guy, I mean, take a look at some of the accounting software uh, stuff that's out there. There's lots of little accounting companies that probably killed to have someone like you working for them in your area. Just ask. Yeah, yeah th th there's nothing there, Patricia, that tells me you can't get an entry level job now. <laughs> Do I have any work contact? This is the next one. Do I have any work contacts in Raleigh, North Carolina? I do not right now. Sorry, man. Here's Brent asking about ports. Oh, this is Mr. Ruby. Hey, man. Okay. Yeah, like I said at the beginning, we're, uh, we've got them all listed out now, and I got them all in a 
uh, like an Excel spreadsheet, but I just want to make it pretty and get it organized by A plus, Net plus, and Security plus. We'll get it knocked out. It's one of these things I can sit here and probably knock it out in 30 minutes. This person uh, liked that the simulation questions on the real exam gave them a good feel based on my simula simulation questions. Not surprised, but always happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, here's another one I, I got. In fact, I think this happened a couple of weeks ago here. People start putting questions up that we know are real questions. These are coming from brain dump sites. A brain dump is basically somebody goes in, takes an exam, and then they immediately puke out on paper as much as they can remember. Uh, it's immoral, it's illegal. The biggest problem with brain dumps is they're rarely accurate because people are going by memory. Uh, so I, I don't like them. I mean, if you're gonna do a brain dump, well, number one, you're gonna break the law if you do it. It's not that it's a heavily enforced law, but it is a law. Uh, remember that these questions are wrong. I mean, if you wanna use it as a topicality discussion or something, that's fine. Bottom line is, don't, don't post these questions online with me, okay? I, I just, I can't be a part of that. So please don't do that. The local guy liking uh, the stuff, A plus and F plus videos. And uh, man, Miss Robin, I, I don't think we're going to be able to get her back. She's moved out of Houston, uh, so... Yeah, she was great. I really enjoyed having her on there. Which program or programs do I use to create most of my graphics? You're going to laugh at me. I use PowerPoint. Uh, the latest versions of PowerPoint are pretty sophisticated. They can output as PNG files, and I'm just very comfortable with the interface. Uh, so, I mean, I have a full Adobe suite. I've got Illustrator and After Effects and all that stuff. But most of the time, I generate my own primitives, and sometimes we have like real artists improve on them, but generally PowerPoint, believe it or not, at least that's where they start. I got a few more questions, but let's see what you guys have over here. Uh, there you go, Patricia. There she is. Hello. <clears throat> Ryan Dixon. Hi, Mike. What CompTIA certifications do you recommend I take after the A plus that I'm studying for? Computer engineering or cybersecurity? Net plus and security plus. CompTIA net plus, CompTIA security plus. From there, you might want to be taking a look at Microsoft. You might want to be taking a look at a Cisco route. You might want to be taking a look at one of the many different security routes. Uh, it's really uh, up to you from there, but that'll at least get you jump started. Andre, it says mixed content. Yeah, there's something on that page that is insecure, and uh, that's really usually not a very easy thing. Well, I mean, it's easy to do. You shouldn't do it. This is where I need Michael Smyre on here, and he'd go ahead and we'd put it into developer's mode, and he could easily find exactly where that is. In fact, I'm gonna make a quick peek. Actually, I did just pull it up. So the usmarshals.gov website is trying to pull a something called siteimproveanalytics.com. It's trying to pull a JavaScript file from that site and there is no certificate from this cross-site uh, script that we're seeing right here. So it is, I'm pretty sure, that's what I thought it was. And uh, maybe I could show this to you without blowing up the computer. 
So it's seen this right here, and it, the, even though there's an HTTPS associated with it, there is, there is no real certificate, and uh, so the browser itself is going, I don't want to do this. So that's what it is. Yeah, you got to remember, you're going to a secure web page, so everything on that page is secure and, and, and encrypted. But if you have other links or you've got stuff or uh, other scripts coming in from other locations, which you can certainly do, they all have to have their own certificates. And the U.S. Marshals needs to check that. It's not an uncommon thing to run into. Oh, you guys already did that. Sorry, Patricia. I was just, I'm scrolling through. I didn't see you already had a good response. Thank you. Why are you guys talking about 8570? Did I miss another question? Uh, DOD security framework. 207, God, I really must have missed this question. Hey Mike, what are two security assurance frameworks that DOD uses? Uh, see, I actually got in trouble with this because I use the old uh, NIST 800 series stuff. Oh, it looks like you guys are even responding to that. Dave Rush, uh, risk management framework upgrade. Yeah, so I'm not sure why he's asking for two. So why are you asking for two? I, 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 uh, is that a question I generated or something? Why would you say, what are the four frameworks that uh, DOD uses? And so I'm not sure why two is the magic phrase there. System 76 laptops. I have no idea what that is. What kind of scary stuff are you getting me into here? Who is this? At I'm looking up uh, System 76 laptops. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, I am not, uh, I don't know anything about these. Uh, Scott's saying things like, Scott's might just be cutting and pasting. Highly customized BIOS and OS called Pop OS, which is a Linux distro. I don't know anything about these guys. And yeah, I'm going to do System76 review. I mean, who, who owns these? Here's a review on the Pop OS that came out uh, late June, so a little over a month ago. It looks like, I got to tell you, I mean, it looks pretty much... Like a, it looks like a standard GNOME Debian style. Yeah, I don't see anything. Will it Chrome? Will it ZFS? Just like Ubuntu does. Supports, you know, all, all the standard deb file stuff, things like that. Uh, 
Oh, it's completely Ubuntu upstream. I don't know. I, uh, it, nothing impresses me here. I'm not saying it's bad or it's good. I'm looking at an Ars Technica review here. Doesn't seem to have anything that excites me very much about it. God, you know, I'm just such an Ubuntu person. Is there something that uh, Ubuntu doesn't have? I'd rather do Ubuntu. I mean, the only time I'm going to go away from a general purpose distro like Ubuntu is if I'm, you know, <coughs> working on something specific. So, like the Raspbian, or it's not Raspbian anymore. I forgot what I would called it, but, yeah. Not overly impressed. I might, I mean, I have to look at the hardware, though, too. And what's with the bias all gefuger? That doesn't make me happy either. Is it really cheap? Like really cheap? Huh. Let's, let's look at a price. Uh, so they got a 15 inch. Let's go with something easier. They have one called the Darter Pro here. Let me show you what I'm looking at. I can't make my screen any smaller. So I'm looking at this Darter Pro. It's a UHD up to, so you know what, what a, this design and buy. Let's go through the whole process. Now I'm curious. Yeah, this is not a good deal. I, I can get, I can get the same system from Dell for uh, about the same price. So don't I don't see it. And if you really want a new laptop, you can go to Dell Refurb. Based on what I'm seeing there, eight gigs of RAM, late gen i7, tiny storage. Get the same basic box on a 15 inch screen from Dell Refurb for sub $600. And it's as good as new. It's got the full warranty and everything. Get yourself a copy of Ubuntu, install it yourself. So unless there's something real special about this System76, I, uh, I don't see it. All right, well, anyway, guys. Wow, I knew it's gonna be a short day. We're 45 minutes into it. Listen, uh, number one, first of all, just because you guys were kind enough to show up today, we have some specials this week. This week's specials are, what are the specials this week? Tell them what we got, Scott. Code for September 7th, MM Live Labor Day, same the deal, 50% off all A plus, Net plus Super Bundles and Security Plus Video Tester Bundles. Folks, my stuff is already cheap. I'm not the cheapest, but I'm the cheapest of the good stuff. And then we're still knocking this off 50%. We've been doing this like now for five months. I can't believe we're, we're still happy, but great. Scott will post that up for you, the prices. All you gotta go is go to www.totalsub.com, order the bundles that you want and just type in that special code uh, at checkout and you get a great deal. So another thing that's very cool that I wasn't aware of is that we have the father of Raspbian. Uh, even Upton is going to be on here September 25th on Dave's Raspbian Day. So this is really the guy who kind of invented the Raspberry Pi. Pretty cool person to have on board. And uh, I know I'll be listening in. <laughs> but uh, so this is going to be uh, Friday, September 25th. Uh, even Upton will be on. You've got to tune in. If you have any interest in Raspberry Pis at all, uh, this is something you just have to take advantage of. How exciting is that? And we still have a couple more uh, guest folks coming in from my side of it too. I don't want to make any announcements yet, uh, but uh, we're, we're working real hard to get some other people to come in. Guys, I've just been off vacation for like four days. I'm still kind of like, hello, you know what I mean? So we're working on it for you though. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. 
Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. All right. Just checking for questions, guys. Okay. System 76. I feel like I'm missing something about this System 76 laptop that would make it really good. I don't know what it is. Ooh. Boy, they sell some high-end hardware, too. Okay. All right, so I still got a few more questions on here, but let's take a look, see if we got any more questions coming up. Oh, don't cough. It's all right. It's these, uh, that's why I'm coughing. I'm sucking on an Altoid. Uh, Mike Stover, how long will the discounts be going on? So Mike, they usually last a week. So really to me, what they do is they last until that Friday. So we got M Monday today. So the special I just offered would be good today, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, all the way through Friday. And then usually over the weekend is when Kathy, our marketing head of sales, uh, we'll reset this and then the next Monday we'll have a different code and sometimes the same sometimes different stuff mm -mm -mm. Trey Green at 27 is it too late for me to start a career in IT no my brother you are fine uh, remember I was just talking to a guy who was 60 years old in Ireland uh, telling him he could do it and uh, you, you really can uh, no, you are, you're plenty young. Your wrists are still mainly cartilage. Don't worry about it. Just get to work. Go get a job. There you go, Tolowit. Backing me up. <laughs> so it's the other funny thing. I, uh, I have go had Google Home running uh, in this house aggressively. I, I had three home minis that were all synced together. Uh, Nest thermostats, cameras, garage door openers, uh, light bulbs. There's more than that, but that'll get it started. And uh, for about six months, this house was, gosh, super automated. And I just started getting a little irritated about doing things like, okay, Google, turn off the master bedroom lights to 50%. <laughs> Or I could just go to the light and go shoot. So then I got a little big brother heebie-jeebied about it and I yanked it all, yanked everything. So now I've got eight, nine thousand dollars worth of uh, IOT stacked up in a pile. <coughs> anyway, so I'm gonna bring it back online. Uh, I'm gonna get it all reconnected and we'll bring it back up. Once I do that, I'll give you guys a little show. It's uh, kind of a fun setup. Uh, I'm always paranoid about Google, but uh, sometimes it's just so convenient. <laughs> Hang on, guys. Okay. Falak Khan, what is the difference between an evil twin and ESSID? Is it only that evil twin is an unauthorized device, or is there any other difference as well? Well, yes, I mean, the big thing about an evil twin is that it's an unauthorized wireless access point. Now, I guess, Falak, what you're saying is, oh, is it an ESSID? Because if I have two wireless access points with the same SSID, that's an ESSID, right? Well, usually an evil twin is not gonna be plugged into. Remember, in order for an ESSID, you have to have two or more wireless access points, and on their Ethernet side, they have to be plugged into the same switch. And an evil twin certainly would not have to do that, wouldn't necessarily even want to do it. I could set up an evil twin 
I could be in a car parked outside without any form of connection and I'm just going to lie and say that I'm another wireless access point. I could do some, sometimes evil twins can be very cool. For example, I can throw out a jammer, jam a particular channel that, and before that, le the legitimate wireless access point can bounce the channel and start reconnecting. I can throw out from the evil twin, a, an attack called a deauth attack, get everybody deauthorized and these devices will immediately try to find the wireless access point with the highest uh, decibels to reconnect to. And if I've got a particular channel jammed, and, and that jam can last for like 100 milliseconds, which doesn't sound like that long, but that's plenty of time for an evil twin to come in and get all connected. So there is no ESSID in that particular situation, right? What you have is an unauthorized WAP pretending to be on the same SSID but an ESSID is two or more wireless access points that are physically connected on the ethernet side to the same switch. John Bendick. Hey Mike, in your opinion, is AWS and Azure really the future? <laughs> they're not the future, they're the present. Uh, they are what it is. Uh, you guys don't remember the bad old days. God, to set up a web server in the scary old days, I mean, we used to do what was called uh, co-location. Like we would uh, rent a physical server and we could access that server remotely, but there was no virtualization. It was a real piece of hardware. And, uh, you know, if it needed a copy of Windows on it or whatever, you had to pay for that. And uh, different, different hosting servers had different things. Like, what if it breaks? Some of them were like, hey, man, you know, this is the reason we're only $5 a month, you know. And uh, others would sit there and, and fix stuff for you. Uh, with, with the moment cloud came in, it just changed our lives. I can go to a web page, go, you know, and... Uh, set up a system as a service like AWS is, you know, S3. And I can sit here and go, I want this much RAM. I want this much storage. I want this CPU. I want this operating system. And I want, uh, I want it to run WordPress and Drupal or whatever it is that you want to do. And then you press another button and boom, it's up, it's running and it's ready to rock and roll. And uh, yeah, the cloud just made our lives a lot easier. Uh, web services that would have cost tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands a month, are now down in the few hundred dollars a month simply because of the economies of scale that the cloud allows us to have. Not only is uh, the cloud the future, it's the present, and it's already a little bit of our past because it continues to evolve and grow better. Uh, it is a great place to learn and grow. Um, yeah, go, go start getting some AWS certs. You may do it. Rupert Johnson, I'm thinking about moving over to Cisco after Net Plus. Should I go for the CCNA first or just for the CCNP? I'd go for the CCNA first. Definitely go for CCNA first. So Rupert, I'm assuming you have some familiarity with uh, Cisco iOS and you know, what does it mean and that kind of thing that you're excited. Remember, you're getting into, you get into Cisco routers because you have a passion for it, right? Uh, you get into AWS because you have a passion for it. Uh, do you have a passion for it? Yeah, it is pretty cool. It just my only problem with Cisco is they have their own they have their own language, you know. And sometimes it's very confusing for a nerd like me. Uh, but a lot of other people find it to be intuitive and easy to use. And uh, definitely, if you have some Cisco certifications, that's always going to help you get a job that you want. Mike Stover, how helpful are the simulation features on Total Sim? They look interesting to me. Well, the simulations are part of the actual CompTIA exams or what they call their, oh, Scott, what's their official term for the, the first few questions? Uh, I'm going blank. It's the practical questions. Let's just call them the simulations. 
so yeah, they're on, they're on the exams, and that's why we wrote the simulations, because we want you to be able to practice for those. And uh, performance-based questions. Thank you, Scott. And uh, so I, I'm glad you find them interesting. I think you'll find them extremely helpful. I was just read you an email here no more than 15 minutes ago about a guy who said, Mike really enjoyed it, those simulations when I took the real exam. And by the way, Mike, I don't give away actual CompTIA questions. Um, not only is it illegal, but they'd probably handcuff me. So if you're looking for the actual questions, you're not gonna find it with me. What, you're, what you gain with me is the real knowledge that doesn't matter how a question on DHCP shows up, you'll know the answer. If a question comes up about you know, TLS, you'll know the answer. I think we do a pretty good job at this. Okay. I'm glad they look interesting. Yeah, get, buy them. Buy them today. They're 50% off on a super bundle. Mike Stover, how long realistically do you recommend studying for the exam for CompTIA? Okay, so you mean the CompTIA A+, because there would be different study times, whether you're talking about like IT fundamentals, A+, Net+, Security+, whatever. <clears throat> Oh, you said it right there, CompTIA A+. Sorry, Mike. <coughs> I plan on doing Core 1 and 2 in the, in the same day as you recommend. Okay, uh, I think that's always a good way to do it. Um, so if you're using like my books, at the beginning of my books, I have a, a table that kind of tells you how many hours to study. Uh, in general, uh, it, it, it really depends on the person, but uh, on the longer end, I'm always going to say it takes about up to 220 hours of study. That's very much on the high end of things. Uh, I always just use this table in my book. <laughs> Hang on, I'm, I'm pulling it up. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, good. This is an old book. It's an old version. Yeah, but anyway, so I put up these tables that tell you how long to study and this kind of stuff. And uh, so basically you break it down. It could be as little as 40 hours for an experienced tech up to 220 hours for somebody who's very new. Uh, you take that amount of time. And you figure, you know, how many, how many hours can I study a week? And uh, extrapolate that out. And, oh, it's going to be 20 weeks. Okay, great. So study for 20 weeks. Go register for the exam. Go to Pro, Prometric and uh, put down the money. Put down the money. Heat and pressure makes diamonds, my friend. And uh, it's, that, that's going to help you figure out how long it's going to take. I don't know yet. Are you going to be studying 80 hours a week? You know, what do you got? I didn't set off. <laughs> okay, Siri. I forget. Okay, Google. Yeah, shut up. All right. Uh, performance. Everybody's typing in performance. Sentinel. Sentinel, you, you know, you want to get into cybersecurity. What aspect of cybersecurity do you want to get into? Do you want to be locking down local area networks for somebody? Do you want to become an entry-level pen tester? Do you want to stand in front of a monitor from midnight till 8 in the morning? You know, you really got to think about what you want to do in terms of cybersecurity. Let me give you a clue. Pen testers are not going to take you as an entry-level person. It just doesn't really work that way. Every now and then you'll see a little something. Again, you need to look at the video that I did with Jessica Dickerson last month, and it was entry-level jobs in IT security. There's some really great information in there for you. <laughs> Mike Stover, I'm looking for real knowledge. Mike, that's all I give you is real knowledge, my friend. Mm. 
Well, cool, John. I'm reading, uh, starting A plus in my college class. What college, John? I'm always curious, especially if it's a four year school, are they, if they're doing my stuff, I'm always interested in that. Okay, so Andre's talking about, so, uh, so Mike Stover has two vouchers. Well, you spend the voucher when you register for the exam. So let's say Mike's going to register for the exam two months from now. The moment he does that, he's paid for the exam, okay? So now you have another voucher. So if you're going to be taking like the, one, the, the 1002 exam, you're going to pay for that now. So if you came up and you failed the 1001, you would not be able to use that voucher because you've already used it to pay for the 1002. So. But yes, there, there's nothing. Any voucher works with any of the A-plus exams. Thank you, Ryan. Buy my stuff. Buy mortgage. Thanks, you. Okay, Mike, so if you're doing three to five hours a day, you sound like you're, you just catch me as somebody who's got some technical savvy. So help, let me make the numbers easy. So you say you got 100 hours, all right? So that gives you 20 days. You know, add 10 days as a buffer, that's 30 days. So you should be going over the Prometric right now and putting your money down and registering for those exams. Absolutely. Just reading, guys. Looks like you guys are getting some good conversations. Web Dev Boot Camp. Yeah, that's not an intimidating name at all. Okay. Uh, I have multiple laptops and trying to network them together to share files and other resources, possibly with one centralized storage. What's the general idea behind this project? Well, I mean, if you just want to share files, uh, I would probably just, okay, first we'd have to get them connected together. Uh, you would probably, if they're laptops, that means they probably all have wireless cards. So I'd go buy a wireless access point. Uh, if you are in a home environment, one of these home routers, wireless home routers would work fine. Uh, if you're in a corporate environment, you might want to just connect them to your already existing wireless network. Uh, then the next thing you're going to do is you're, you're going to have to install another computer that will actually act as a file server. Uh, probably your most inexpensive route there would be look at one of these Linux-based NASs, Network Attached Storage Solutions. Uh, these are just little headless computers, no keyboard, no, no monitor, but you plug them in. They'll have an IP address and you can connect to them like a Windows share. Poof! You got a shared folder that everybody can access. So that might be one way to handle something like that. Uh, Scott Jernigan recommends FreeNAS. I'm not against FreeNAS. A lot of FreeNAS is just software, though. So you, you're probably you're going to have to go buy some, uh, uh, like a computer here. And to be honest with you, there are a lot of inexpensive NAS boxes that I don't even care what the operating system is on them. Uh, you you control them through a web interface. <clears throat> you, you know they come in you know. 4 terabyte, 10 terabyte, 12 terabyte, 16 terabyte, spread up, uh, spread or uh, among different drives, uh, or you can do what's called JBOD, just a bunch of disks. And I would probably buy the whole physical thing and not even really care what the uh, operating system is. Uh, trying to think of it, is there a... Is there a I'm just like looking here on Newegg. Uh, got a bunch of eight terabyte uh, systems here. Nothing particularly special, but 
Here's an eight terabyte MyCloud. I've heard about this brand. You basically just plug that in and then you access it through a particular web page and configure it all up and it's ready to rock and roll. The other thing about most of these NAS boxes is they can be trivially uh, upgraded to put more drives in them. Now, if you really want to be cool, you absolutely can go out and buy your own, you know, like a little mini tower system, put a bunch of drives in there, set up an array, uh, <coughs> set up a hardware array or not, or not, and get something like free NAS, which is a Linux distro. You install it on there. It'll set up your drives. It'll set up your Samba shares all pretty much automagically does a good job. Web dev, did that help you, man? What what is the uh, vulnerability in Flash? Jeez, uh, there's so many. I pull up the common vulnerability the CVE database for Flash, and you just read on and on. Uh, again, I need Michael Smyre here for the detailed answer to that question. Java's bad. Well, Java's bad on generic web servers. Java's very good on Android. JavaScript is good, but Java itself is, because they can't really control it is the biggest problem. Mike Stower, I plan on going A plus to Net plus to Security plus. Yeah, I would be looking at. Well, Mike, that's a complicated question because you're really talking about, you know, A plus Net plus Security plus are very very entry level certifications, very entry level, and you're not going, Mike, you don't go take a bunch of certifications and then go look for a job. You go look for a job today. Go start working. Okay. There's lots of entry level jobs. We've done two or three videos on this and I just don't feel like repeating uh, all the wonderful resources out there for people with entry level jobs. Go get one. Certification studying is done on nights and weekends. Uh, it's not, it, you're, you're making a terrible mistake if you feel that you should go get a bunch of certifications and then you're going to magically get a job. It's not going to happen. You're going to get cruddy initial jobs and you get a few more certifications, you get a little more work experience, then all of a sudden your jobs become a lot less cruddy. You go to work, go to work, go work at Best Buy. They're open here in Texas. Uh, there's lots of online jobs. Amazon has a number of, go to www.amazon.com, go to the corporate site, human resources. They got all kinds of online jobs. Don't even have to get out of your chair. Uh, go for it. But first, first get a job. See, then what's going to happen is you're going to have a few of these jobs, Mike, and then you're going to keep studying for your different certs. And all of a sudden you're going to go, well, you know what? I've discovered that uh, here at Amazon, they're paying a gazillion dollars an hour. I'm making this up, okay? Uh, they're, they're paying a gazillion dollars an hour for somebody who can you know, come into some of their uh, Amazon uh, the facilities and switch out systems, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, so I always get nervous when somebody who doesn't even have a basic certification like A plus says they want to get into cybersecurity. Because there's, I'd love to, because if you were here with me, Mike, the thing I'd be going is, why? Because I heard it's great, because I heard they make a lot of money. Uh, I would want to hear somebody, without, w w without even any basic certification, if somebody said they want to be a pen tester, they would have to be saying things to me like, so I found this thing called Kali Linux and I've been jacking with it, you know. Um, there'd have to be a lot of self-motivation there. Do not get into cybersecurity because you think you can make a lot of money. You can, but there's a lot of work involved. There's tons of space in the IT world. And in general, if you want to make a lot of money in IT, get in sales. 
Find a piece of software you love and sell the bejesus out of it. Mark Spaulding, question. Last week I started a Security Plus class at a local community college which uses test out. How can your study material help me? Well, because my study material is a lot better than test out. I was going to say something. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, a lot of people are saying good things about test out. Okay, but to answer your question, maybe my stuff won't do you any good at all. Uh, I've been at it longer than test out. I think that me and the gang have a system for providing training for CompTIA materials to be second to none. I know I'm cheaper than test out. Uh, but if you've already paid for this and they're already giving you that stuff, that's good. But you gotta keep in mind, the number one tool you need to pass any certification, not just CompTIA, but any certification, is you need practice questions. That's the big thing. Videos are great. Books are great. Flashcards are great. Lab sims are great. Whatever the stuff is. But the, the, the most important tool that you're going to use to pass any certification is a bank of practice questions that give you a good idea of what the real McCoy is like. And that's what we do better than anybody else. We certainly do it better than test out. Um, I'm not against test out. In fact, one of the things is that assuming test out even gives you practice questions because sometimes a little unsure because they're more of a lab sim kind of a guy. But anyway, uh, even if let's say you use test out practice questions which it's your school's already given to you, you already paid for, you might as well use them. Uh, practice questions are written by human beings, and human beings have a voice to their questions. And that voice uh, can sometimes get in your brain. So like when you're, you're using one person's brand of practice questions, and you'll go through and go through, let's just say they're really good practice questions, all right? Remember, good practice questions doesn't mean I'm copying the exam, all right? It means I'm giving you a, a sense of the look and feel and the tone and the body of the questions that you'll actually run into on the exam. But what if your practice questions don't do that? Or what if they only do it a certain percentage? It's going to voice. You know, I can tell an Ernest Hemingway novel in about two sentences. And if you're used to Ernest Hemingway and all of a sudden you hear, you know, you're reading The Great Gatsby, that might be a problem, right? So having a second source with a second voice can often be very, very helpful in terms of when you actually look at the real questions. I still think mine are better, but no, 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 there you go. All right, Mike, well, you, you can do what you can do, my friend. Tomas, hey, Mike, in the book, oh, God, the A-plus book. Okay, Tomas, I got more than one A-plus book. You write that CPU uses address bus to communicate with the devices. Is that a type? Okay. Just read your question, make sure I got it right. So, you have a data bus, all right? And the data bus connects to your RAM, but it can only connect to one byte of your RAM at any given moment. You might have 32 gigabytes of RAM, 32 billion lines of eight bits wide of RAM. 
how do you get to these individual bytes of RAM? And that's what the address bus does. All the address bus does is allows the CPU to point to where it wants in RAM and it connects the external data bus to that one chunk of RAM. It's actually more than a byte uh, in RAM. It's usually gonna be like 64 uh, bits wide or even 128 bits wide, but we use the addressing functionality. The address gets us to where we want to in RAM and the uh, data bus brings it into the CPU. Do not confuse the address bus with the data bus, okay? The data bus moves data, the address bus communicates. It actually communicates to more than just RAM. That same address bus can connect to devices like hard drives and things like that. And it can actually send commands through the address bus. Data still comes through the data bus, but the address bus allows for communication. Scarlet Red, no advice for practicing Network Plus performance questions. I have lots of advice. Scarlet, are you asking for me to give you some advice? Which I will gladly do, although you're asking a very, very, very large question. Oh wait, this just in. Michael Smyre helped with Flash. So you guys, you're ready, this comes from Michael Smyre. It's complicated. But essentially, it's an entire application runtime environment. Over the years, many vulnerabilities have popped up in it. By this point, all the features that made it useful have been folded into the browsers directly. There you go. So Scarlett, uh, you're gonna have to ask me a question here. Where'd you go? No advice for practicing network plus performance. Okay, I'm gonna guess that you're asking for advice for performance-based questions on Network Plus. I can do that. Uh, the questions for performance-based questions on Network Plus are extremely practical. And, <clears throat> you know, if you ever managed to switch, set up a VLAN or configured an SSID, you know, you're familiar with these types of interfaces that you would see. Uh, performance-based questions when you run into command line know your different kinds of net stat and what do they do uh, IP config IP config slash all you know you should be able to know those and recognize them you should recognize the output um, th th those would be the big details I could give you on something like that Thank you, web dev. So, uh, M Mark Spaulding, you gotta be careful. So Udemy has a small subset of practice questions. Uh, I also sell my own big test banks, which is online uh, total tester, we call it. And you could go to www.totalsim.com. We've got some deals this week, which Scott Jernigan's gonna put up real quick. And uh, we've got a code for today, and you can take a look and see what you can uh, get from something like that. So just have some pretty good deals. Okay, Mike, so it looks like you're kind of a standalone kind of guy, hanging your own shingle. Okay, go for it then, man. Uh, go get some certs. But you can still be working now, even if you're working from home. I, I, you gotta work, gotta work, man. All right, Scarlet Red, Security Plus. Okay, uh, <coughs> Security Plus, plus performance-based questions are all pretty simplistic. There are scenario questions where you're looking at a whole network. What I can tell you is this. Uh, if you run syslog at all, you'll find the performance-based Security Plus questions pretty trivial. Uh, make sure you know you know, a lot of times people get in trouble because they'll miss little things. Like if I've got four computers all connected to the same switch and three of the computers are in the 10.10.10 .10 .10 network and one of the computers is in the 
10.1 network, no one's going to be able to talk to it. That is not a real CompTIA question, but it gives you a sense of the feel of these questions, where you're going to have a big diagram, you're clicking on different computers, seeing what their configurations are, and uh, Security Plus is notorious for very, very complicated looking questions, where the answers are usually wildly trivial. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave it at that. You should be able to look at any network diagram by the time you're in Security Plus. Mike, what would you say to someone who says, I know everything about IT? <laughs> I wouldn't say anything. I would just smile and walk away from them. I've been at this for 40 years and I learned something new every day. Are you kidding me? I learned something new every hour. Mike, I'm not against you going to become a pen tester, but I'm going to tell you one thing. You're not going to be a pen tester and work at home. That's just not going to happen. Uh, so it is very rare for somebody to just pick up some certi certifications, hang their own shingle, and then become a pen tester. I'm not saying it hasn't happened. I haven't seen it. How's that sound? Falak, rather than using ESSID, can we place antenna at different places? Would it work? All right, Falak, so you're saying just take one wireless access point and uh, run the antennas to different places. Maybe for a very small environment that would work, but um, when you move, physically remove the antenna and use uh, extending wires from the wireless access point to the antenna, you dramatically, uh, oh God, Dave Rush, help me, you reduce gain tremendously. So antennas have a certain amount of gain, but as you just add a wire to it, it's kind of like it's the antenna, but it's not a functional part of the antenna when you run it from the radio source to the end of the antenna, and it actually degrades it horribly. So the, my answer to you, Falak, is maybe somebody could do that sometimes. Uh, on a point-to-point, -point, I might do it, where I'll take one of the antennas and uh, and do like a big, long uh, directional antenna, uh, that would work, but I'm shooting to another wireless access point. So, no, I guess it wouldn't work in that case either. Uh, for lock, people don't do what you're describing. There could be some very specific situations where it might work. However, I would not want to be a person diagnosing that network or trying to uh, find out the, the hot spots because you've got some wacky antenna set up. But I'm not saying no. Mm. Scarlett, it's not hard to find performance-based questions at all. I sell them right here, man. <coughs> I know you. Everybody wants free stuff. Sorry, not going to do that. Mm -mm. Yeah. Hate to say it, kids, but I got to pay my mortgage. Chewbacca Giul. Just want to say thank you for recommendations for job. I listened to them, focused, asked them about their five-year plan. I can be part. Of it. Well, what happened? Chewbacca, did you get a job? You can't leave me hanging like this. Oh, final interview with the vice president. Hey, man, I'm going to preemptively give you a round of applause. <clears throat> How are we doing on time? 324. Yeah, I thought it would be a light day. I don't even know why I say that anymore. Okay, so Mike, I created a USB Ubuntu Linux boot stick today. All right, booted it, played with it for a while. When I tried to reboot Computer 10, my computer had a fit. Oh my God. D. Patterson, did you install it? I think you might have installed it and wiped out your Windows 10. Uh, I haven't done a Ubuntu dual boot. Scott Jernigan is, uh, if you install Ubuntu by default, I don't think it gives you an option for dual boot. It'll just wipe whatever's on there, right? So I don't know. 
uh, you may be in big trouble. Uh, luckily, you kept your Windows, uh, you got your little Microsoft thumb drive, right? Yay! Oh, you don't have that? <laughs> Ugh, yuck. I gotta tell you, the biggest mistake people make, you get a Windows system, the number one thing you need to do is get your CD key. And that is so important. There are programs that you can, uh, if you have a Windows 10 system and you don't have the CD key, there are free programs out there <coughs> that will allow you to uh, get your CD key. Type in window, Windows 10 Win CD key into Google and there'll be a ton of them out there. That way if you ever have a problem like what uh, we're just describing here is uh, if you've wiped out your Windows 10, it's not that, to me, that's not a big deal. It's a pain in the butt, but it's not an earth ender. Um, you just reinstall Windows. You know, for me, that's a fun little thing to do in the afternoon. But you have to have your Windows media, and in particular, you have to have your CD key. If you own a Windows 10 system, you need to uh, get that CD copied. I have a thumb drive that has a, a system backup and a copy of the CD key on every system I own, every single one because you run into troubles and you play with Linux and you may have accidentally uh, wiped Windows 10. <coughs> Axe, working on Labor Day? Eh. It's Labor Day, we're laboring. Scarlet Red, where can I find practice ones to study? Scarlet Red, you're about to start asking for free stuff, aren't you? Go to www.totalsem.com check out the simulations at our website. All right, Mike, I'm glad to hear you're working. I just, and I don't know you, so it was unfair for me to even make that presumption. I just run into a lot of folks and they're like, oh, I gotta get eight certifications before I can even get a job. And all of a sudden it's like, dude, <laughs> You got to work. So understand. Thanks for understanding where I am there, Mike. I appreciate it. Mark, I oh, appreciate it. Uh, Phil Green, is the voucher really $329 or am I missing something? Yeah, they're pretty expensive, Phil. Uh, but that seems a little high. Scott Jernigan, what is the total seminars price for our vouchers? So you got to keep in mind, Phil, there's other people who sell vouchers other than me. I think we got a pretty good price, but we're not the only ones out there. Boop, 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 boop. Scott Jernigan, help me out, man. What is the... I'm looking it up. Okay, so I'm looking at the price on our website and uh, two vouchers is 400 bucks and one voucher is 204 bucks. Yeah, thank you, Scott. 399 for two vouchers. So that's the answer. That's about a 10% discount from uh, MSRP. Mm -hmm. Bahed, big fan from Iran. I love Iranian food. Uh, my Farsi is terrible, but it's like Koresh Bamanjan with Tadig. It's good food. I can eat that stuff all day long. Urban Mercado. Are part-time entry-level positions even possible? I currently serve as a part-time caregiver. Urban, I'm sure they exist. I don't, it's not something I look for, so I, I don't know. In today's online world, there's a good possibility. But I don't know. You know, that, that's, always a, that's always the tricky part. I understand you know, we have our challenges and the things we do and caregiving and things like that are important. 
but it just makes it always trickier if you, you know, it's like somebody wants to do apartments, like, well, I got a dog. It's like, yeah, you know, okay. That makes it harder. That, you know, it's a matter of choice. Mike, I don't know. You, uh, remote pen test? I doubt it, but I'm not saying no. And geez, Mike, go for your dream. You know, pursue it. And I would be thrilled for you to come back in a few months going, see, Mike, you said I couldn't do it. Neener, neener. I'll be more than glad to eat humble pie on that. D. Patterson, what's the code for A plus tester discount? D. Patterson, we sell our vouchers at a discount. We do not discount the discount. That price is our discounted price. It's uh, more expensive if you go to CompTIA. See, I'm bounded. I quit sucking. I, I quit sucking on Nicorette lozenges about three months ago, and I'm completely addicted to Altoids. I don't care what color they are. Okay, Scarlet Red, here we go. Scott Jernigan, Scarlet Red wants to know where he can get, uh, oh, I don't think we have performance-based Security Plus questions. Scott Jernigan, bail me out. What's the, uh, I think we only have practice questions and videos, right? I see what the problem is. Yeah, Scarlet, I don't think we've uh, done them. We didn't do them for the 501 just because of the timing. And uh, I'm not sure if we did it. Yeah, we're definitely working on them. Uh, so Scarlett, give us, give us some time. Sorry, man. Probably be a couple more months before those come out. Danium DT. Hi, Mike. I have scheduled Net Plus and Security Plus this month. Woof. Good for you, man. What position would you advise me to go for and other advice? <laughs> Get a job. This is always so hard for me. I don't know you, Danium, you know? Are you a young, single go-getter who's, you know, physically healthy and you've got a good car and you're in a upbeat environment? You have a sense of what the industries are in your area and how you can fit into it? Do you have those kinds of answers? You need those. You know, what, what businesses are in your town? Uh, is your town in a hiring world right now? now? I know here in the U.S., you know, things are a little down, but, you know, compared to stuff I hear like in India right now, getting a job's impossible, which is sad. Uh, so I would have a very different thing to say to you, whether you're in the U.S. or whether you're in India or maybe you're in the EU. Uh, what, what are your, what's your experiences? Do you have a college degree? Do you have a double A degree? Uh, did you murder a man back in 2003 and you're fighting that? And you see where I'm coming from? Uh, it's, um, it's very, very hard to answer a question like that. So sorry about that. Scarlett, don't worry about it. I am not pimping for free stuff. It's, I understand. Don't worry about it. Uh, I am getting a little, I, Scarlett, bear with me, man, but I get, I got nailed uh, by a bunch of people. It was like, oh, I need free stuff. And uh, yeah, I can't. I'd like to. Yeah, Phil, if you think these prices are high, wait till you check out things like, uh, you know, more advanced certifications. That's just what they go for. Okay, that is my name, oh. What do you think of sites like Bug Crowd? Never even heard of it. Let's take a look at it together. Bug Crowd. Oh, I do know Bug Crowd. I'm sorry. It's good. Uh, it's not on my list, but I know it's on a lot of other people's lists. Uh, I think that there's other tools that work just as well. Um, but I would say go for it. What are their prices? Uh, 
I always get nervous with these places that don't price anything. It means they're expensive. It's fine. There's lots of vulnerability scanners out there, though. Ed, that's just one. Morning Saint. I was a store manager for six years until COVID laid us off in March. I've been wanting to get a cybersecurity, but I was hesitant to leave my job, even though I already started to look around. Yeah, now you're at it. <laughs> Sorry, man. I know it's tough. Uh, it, but uh, you're in. Come on. Let's do this. Let's knock it out. Get some certs. Ulysses Ferrer. Mike, I'm reading your A-plus book. How do I get a job in IT after I get certifi certification? You know what? All right, Scott, let's talk about this. Why don't we do another? I'm going to do another thing about getting work. Uh, I'm going to ask folks like uh, Jessica Dickerson to come back. Scott, can you help me write this down? Uh, getting a job in IT. Uh, uh, Ulysses, the thing I'm going to tell you is I'm not going to tell you on how to get a job in IT after I get the certification. I'm going to tell you to get a job in IT now. Are, are, unless you're directly running into jobs that say you must have an A plus or a net plus or a CCNA or whatever it is, you go get a job. There's plenty of entry level jobs out there. Again, here in the United States, uh, your name doesn't sound like Jim or Steve. So you might be from another country, I don't know. Uh, but there definitely starts to see a big difference uh, in uh, job markets across the, the world. But uh, go get a job now. Entry level jobs don't require certifications. Here in the United States, you can work at a place called uh, Micro Center, which does not require A plus, but they go look, We'll even help you pay for the A+, but we, you know, we want you to get it, but we, you don't need it to get a job. Best Buy, same thing. They don't even know what A+, even hardly is anymore at Best Buy. But you know, the, those are sales types jobs, which are great jobs to get. You want to talk about understanding equipment, putting stuff together, discounting parts for yourself. But this whole attitude of first I must get certifications, then I will get a job is false. I think I'm just going to put that at the bottom of everything. Certifications don't get you a job. Certifications get you in the door. Certifications show that you're a person who is interested and is looking to build their, their skill set. Certifications get you in the door. They put your resume at the top of the stack, but they don't get you jobs. Get a job. Get certified. Well, Mike, if I have a job, then why do I need to be certified? For the next job. Daniels, you're in Canada. You're in Edmonton. Are Ubiquity WAPs the best in your experience? For the price, yes. Uh, I've been really happy with them. We use them at, at total, uh, all over the place. And uh, I like them. There's probably better WAPs that are be more, ro more robust in enterprise environments like Cisco WAPs. But Ubiquity for the price, uh, their throughput, and their feature sets, I find them very attractive. We love them. Also, what's a good wireless analyzer app for the iPhone? Woo! I don't speak iPhone because I have a powerful and flexible uh, platform called Android. Uh, I'm going to let Scott Jernigan uh, answer that question. Scott, uh, what are you guys running on uh, your iPhones for wireless analysis? I have, what is the name? I'm pretty sure there is a uh, analyzer called Wi-Fi Man, which I'm 99% sure runs on uh, Apple's. Um, 
Yeah, Wi-Fi Man comes from uh, Ubiquity. I think that's hard to get to. Uh, works pretty good. There, uh, Scott Jernigan says there isn't one. Apple locks all that stuff down. Huh, okay, well, there you go. There's the answer. One more reason to own an Android. <laughs> I'm kidding, I know. You Apple kids, you can give it up anytime, can't you? <laughs> yeah, USA Health Insurance Reform. Prices for CompT exams not that bad if you pass them on the first try and don't have to retake. So, that's true. Uh, yeah. But you fail exams. I mean, it's, it's, you just kind of build the price of failing, you know, 25 to 33% of your exams into life. You know? That's how many I fail, percentage-wise. Probably more than that. Scarlet Red, what's the best Linux distro for beginners? I, I really like Ubuntu. Uh, it installs easily. It's got good hardware support. It's got a, a, a great uh, software repository behind it. It's Debian, which I kind of prefer. Uh, yeah, tons of support. Yeah, I'm going to go with Ubuntu. Ubuntu desktop, probably. Oh, Morning Saint. I, I had this guy come up to me once years ago. As young man, da 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 da, da and uh, he's like, "Well, I need to, I need to warn you. I have a murder conviction." It's like, dude, I, 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 I don't, I don't think I can get you a job. You know, it's hard to tell him. Yeah, that was sad. And like his whole family came in with him to show that he had support and all this. And the guy's clearly changed his ways, and I, I can't. I can't. I couldn't get him a job. I just, I didn't take a penny from him. Mark Spaulding, I do not see the disco discount code for your practice test. All right, well, I think we're just doing bundles today. And the code was, what was the code for today, Scott? One more time. We're going to Scott Jernigan and type that in one more time for us. <laughs> Transplant health. Mike, just show me the damn logs. Yeah. You guys are already knowing my stories. You're like my ex wives. Yeah, Mark, I'm going to be, I'm here every Monday and Wednesday at 2 o'clock Central Daylight Time. And you guys are typing in so many things. I'm a little, I'm a little bit, I'm losing y'all a little bit. Actually, Patricia, Patricia Grace, you do bring up an interesting point. A lot of colleges, and these have to be like, or not even just colleges, but even like high schools here in the United States can get very deeply discounted vouchers, far cheaper than I can ever do. I, I'm not even a part of that, but you have to be, you usually have to be a, a student in their programs. I'm unaware of any clever way to get around this. Trust me, if there was a clever way to get around this where I could get you guys deeply discounted vouchers, I wouldn't even be bothered selling vouchers. Mm. Oh, that kind of voucher discount. I forgot what that was. Uh, Scott, you're going to have to give us proper instructions on the, uh, when James Stanger from CompTIA came on, he got us discount vouchers, uh, but it wasn't that huge of a discount, and I don't even remember where that happens. So Scott, you just, Scott Jernigan, you just said, Dr. Stranger code, you gave me a code, valid till 11 120. Where do I go to do that? Is this a total seminars thing? Is this a CompTIA thing? I'm going to need more information. Please help me out there.
All right, you guys are all talking about this Pop OS. Uh, I'll check it out. I'm a, new, I'm a new Ubuntu guy. All right. Anyway, so there was a deal. I don't remember how good of a deal it was, but just so you guys know, if you go over to uh, comptia.org, there's a little bit of a stall here, but uh, so you go to comptia.org and you use this code over there somewhere. Folks, you're going to have to figure out how to use this. I, I'm not going to teach you how to use CompTIA's website, but you use this Security Web 2020 JS code, and they have some pretty good deals on, on discount vouchers. So you, you might want to check that out. And if somebody could get back to me and tell me what that discount price is, I'd sure appreciate it because I don't remember what it is. Mm -mm -mm. Kathy posted in the feed. Kathy, Kathy Yale is with us today? I don't see Kathy Yale. Mm -hmm. Okay. USA Health Insurance Reform. Mike, thank you for giving a shout out to Mike Jones. I didn't know. Yeah, he was, Mike Jones is from Houston. I'm not really that much into rappers, but we had a couple of guys who were cameramen. And uh, we just thought it was funny. We just put that in. Going to do some Mike Jones and have some purple drank. <laughs> if you don't know what purple drank is, good. It's a uh, co cough syrup with codeine and uh, Red Bull. Don't do it. No, no. Okay, things like things might be slowing down here a little bit. <laughs> Cold brew to help keep me awake. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, it looks like uh, things are slowing down here a little bit. Uh, let me make sure I'm not missing. Mark Spalding. Where can I find videos on Jessica Dickerson? Mark, the, uh, it's, at, it's on the Total Seminars channel where you are right now here on YouTube. Uh, and it says, uh, how to get an entry-level job in IT security. It's on the label, so it should be uh, really easy to read. Mm -mm -mm. Ryan Dixon, do you plan on getting a new NVIDIA RTX 3000 series card when they release in October? One card? <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, I'm still running on my uh, 1080 Ti. I got to be honest with you. I, I, I'm just not pushing my gaming very hard right now. So it's fabulous. Um, especially I got two beautiful uh, monitors running dual 4Ks. It looks good on the 1080, but again, I'm not pushing it at all. Uh, yeah, I'll probably get one or at least play with it for a while and do an unboxing and give it to Scott Jernigan or Dave Rush because these guys are important. Mm. Phil Green, best way to become a technical account manager. I'm in sales now and still study Network Plus. I also, well, if you're in sales now, Phil, don't you already have technical guys who are doing the uh, uh, account manager or project manager stuff? And those guys would probably be the ones you more want to talk to. Uh, a lot of technical account managers, a lot of these uh, folks might want to look at a four-year degree on some of this. Not all of them do. Uh, but to me, if you're in sales, especially if you're halfway decent in sales and you want to to me, it would almost be a downgrade to go down to account management. Uh, but yeah, the best way would be to apply and you would apply particularly on tools of which you have a high degree of comfort. Uh, so like if you could go from sales to technical account management right here within your own uh, uh, business with your own company, that's often a really good way to go. Or you can go to something else where you have a lot of skill set a similar product, you know. A 
<laughs> can you make us build, make us a PC build video that puts the verge to shame? No, because they use ridiculous equipment that I would never, ever, ever. Joshua Rayford, in the military, you failed Security Plus twice. Joshua Rayford, Joshua Rayford. Whoops. Joshua Rayford, send me an email. Joshua Rayford, send me an email. Do not take the test again until you talk to me, okay? I got an offer for you, man. So Joshua, I'm going to want to know any questions. Number one, have you been using my practice materials? Uh, what, what's, what, do you, what study materials? Are you using a book? Are you using videos? Give me kind of a rundown of who you are, Josh, and uh, I have an offer for you. Alice, yes, you're late. Where have you been, young lady? Na, 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 na. Yeah, Phil, I got to tell you, sales is a grind. Uh, it, it just takes a tremendous amount of energy, uh, any kind of sales, building a pipeline. But man, I tell you, good salespeople make crazy money. I, I don't care what, they can sell cars. Uh, pretty good. Italians are late by default. I hear you there. All right, guys. Well, it looks like uh, we're definitely wrapping up. So we're going to go ahead. Sorry, Alice. We're literally going to lose you no sooner than we get you. And uh, Robert Hatcher, should I take the Red Hat, Ansible, or DevOps next? What have you taken so far, Robert? I mean, that would be the big question. I'll stall for a minute. Uh, do you want to get into DevOps? Is that really where your goal is in life? And I'm just not, I got I'm not, I'm not too big on Red Hat. I'm not against Red Hat at all. Uh, I've just been such a Debian guy for the last five years. I don't remember the last time I've done a Red Hat installation. It's been a while. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm not against it. I'm, I'm just a Debian guy. What can I say? Not only I'm a Debian guy, I'm a pretty much a uh, Ubuntu guy. Although you guys, what was the name of that crazy Pop OS? I'm going to check it out. Or is it Pop O's? That sounds like cereal. All right. So anyway, before we break camp, a couple of things. Number one, uh, I'm going to do another video on getting a job. And I'm basically going to give that same speech that you guys have heard before, but I'm going to put it all nice and structured in one video so everybody can keep running back to it. Uh, this will be different than getting an entry-level job in IT security, where uh, Jessica was talking about those certain places to look for jobs. Uh, we're going to look at this more generically about getting a job. Uh, so, Scott, please help me remember to do something like that. Shoot, we may do that on Wednesday. Uh, that won't take too terribly long. Uh, but then... Uh, Okay, well, Scott's got all this covered here in terms of what, uh, what else is happening out here today. Uh, we, uh, we definitely have Dr. Eben Upton, the creator of Raspbian, uh, Raspberry Pi, coming up on September 25th. That's going to be very cool. That's going to be Dave Rush handling all that. Uh, I want to say, just look forward to this job video. Probably find an entry-level job in New York City that isn't from the military. Ah, there you go, Morning Saint. You take the job you can find. If you don't want to work for the military, well, tough. Work for a while. Ryan Dixon, I'm 16 years old. Uh, able to find a job with Mage factored in? Probably not, uh, Ryan. What you're going to have to do instead is probably consider hanging your own shingle, doing repair work. Start with your your friends and your mom and your dad and your teachers and your plumbers and da 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 da. Uh, you can make a crazy amount of money just doing. Little repair jobs for people that you know. Well, what if I break it? Hey, you break it. <laughs> you know, people have to know the risks involved. That might be another interesting episode to do, Scott Jernigan. That would be like, what's it like to hang your own shingle today and can you do it successfully? The answer is you sure can. Uh, it takes a little work. A lot of people are suddenly discovering, it's like, oh, man, I have to work Saturdays and Sundays? Yeah, well, you do. Yeah, Tola would say, fix stuff for your school if you can. That's what, uh, Tola, what that's tough to do. Depends on what the, here in the United States, what states are always the big ones. Oh, I see what you're saying, Morton. Say they want you to work. They want you to wear a uniform. 
All right, well, that is, uh, that's a whole different. Mm, and, uh, all right, guys, well, listen, I'm going to let you all go. Uh, this uh, Wednesday, which is two days from now, I'll probably have just a little speech on how you get a job in IT. Not, not a security job, but a generic uh, job. And uh, yeah, we'll do that for Wednesday. Uh, I know Dave Rush has a uh, uh, pie hole coming up. Uh, Dave, is that this Friday? I'm looking forward to seeing that. Uh, I have not, still haven't worked on my pie at all, Dave. I'm so sorry. I'll get on it. Uh, but other than that, uh, we're going to be seeing you all a little bit later. I promise you on Wednesday we'll have some kind of competition for free stuff. And other than that, I'm going to let you go. So that's about it. Folks, I'll talk to you all later. This is your Uncle Mike saying good night.